Hey everyone, um, welcome back to Valley Mullen Farm. I'm Lance for those who haven't uh, watched before. Hey, um, so um, one of the uh, things Claire and I really like to try and do, um, and what we try to do as a family, is be as self-sufficient as possible with as many of our foods as possible. And one thing that we've always really wanted to do, we've talked about for a really long time, is being um, completely self-sufficient in butter. We have done some a little bit. Claire's actually made some really nice butter over the years, but we've never quite got there, so we've decided that um, this is going to be the year that we try to do it. Um, so today I'm just going to do a quick video on um, the process that we're going to follow. So um, some of you will already know I um, collect vintage machinery and um, as a result I've come across a couple of really cool vintage um, items over the years that's going to help us. So one thing is our, um, our ball butter churn, vintage butter churn and I've also got a vintage um, cream separator made by Lister. So I'm going to show you how they both work and we're going to go through the process of first um, separating some cream and then um, making some butter. Cool, so at the start of the video you would have seen some shots there of me milking this morning. So um, I've kept some milk here um, in, this is a 20 litre um, container. So we've got a couple of these that we use for keeping milk in or sometimes we use them for storing water when we go camping and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, cool thing about the milk that we're using was, you know, a couple of hours ago we're still inside the cow. So as far as the cream and um, butter and yogurt and stuff that we make from it, you're not really going to get much fresher than that. Um, so that's the, what we're going to be using. Um, for separating cream, they say it's best to be at room temperature. So I have made the mistake in the past of trying to take chilled milk out of the vat, at, which is at about four degrees Celsius, and um, it didn't work and got really frustrated and then eventually did some Googling and worked out that's because I should be using warm milk. Cool, so this is the uh, cream separator that we're going to be using today. Um, so this is a Lister, what is it, a Lister PS12. Um, so I rescued this from an old walkthrough cow shed in the Inglewood area. Really cool thing about it was that the cow shed had basically been switched off for the last time and I think probably in the 50s or 60s and everything was still there um, as it was, had last been used. So yeah, I bought this and I've cleaned it up and we used it. Managed to get some stainless steel spouts and stuff for it because originally they were tin, uh, tin plated and they'd gone all rusty. Um, so now we've used it a few times and it works really cool. Um, it normally lives on a trolley on the ground because it weighs so, so much I've just brought it up here as an easy way to show it to you guys. Um, and I'm going to dismantle it show, shortly now and um, just show you all the working parts. So most um, cream separators that people have probably seen um, were hand cranked. So this is a bit of a later one that's quite sort of a little bit flash for the time that it's actually got an electric motor on it. Um, it still works in exactly the same way. Awesome, so um, I'll take, you, I'll take it apart and show you as we go. So this top um, piece is this, so this is um, the top part of the mechanism is where the um, fresh or raw milk goes in. So it goes in this hole, which I'll show you a bit more shortly. Um, next, this top spout will come off. It'll come off in one. So we have two spouts here. The top one is uh, where the cream comes out, and the bottom one is where the milk goes out. Then we lift this cone mechanism out. Um, so down the middle of here is a bit of a hole where is where the milk will go. And then I take that lid off. Inside we have all of these little cones. There's a whole lot of I can get one apart and show you. Cool, so inside it has 30 of these little cone shaped dishes. Um, so they are splined onto the central shaft so they can only go on a certain way. Um, and the way that a cream separator works, it's pretty clever really, but um, so um, those of you that have ever had raw milk before will see that um, the way that cream floats on top of milk is because cream is lighter than milk. So the way that a cream separator works, it uses that um, by Spinning the milk, the raw milk, um, at a really high RPM. I think it's between about 50 and 60 RPM. Um, and then, in doing that, the milk travels to the outside of these cones and the cream at the, in the uh, middle. So, as it does that, um, the, cre the milk sorry, then travels up the outside of this cone into the outside um, spout that we have. The cream comes up the middle and into the inside spout. So that way you'll have your buttermilk or skim milk coming off one spout and your cream coming off the other spout. So I'm just going to finish putting these back together. Um, you've got to be real careful that you put them in the right way around or they can get jammed and bent. Cool, 
which after that we have this little um, cone shape, looks like an upside down funnel that goes on the top of the, f the main cones. This little, um, I think you can see it, but hold it close enough, this little machine here, little machine, little screw, is actually how you adjust how thick you want your cream to be. Um, I don't actually understand quite how it works, but I've read that you can adjust that somehow uh, and you'll get thicker or thinner cream. We just use it as it came to us and it gives it a really, a really good thick whipping cream which uh, works really well for what we want, or heavy cream I think it's called, not whipping cream. So that goes on top, finally um, your main spout, not main spout, sorry main cone, that has a little knob here that lines up with a little groove down the bottom and in the bottom of this little dish there's an um, o-ring that it sits on and that will seal it to keep the milk in. So that little thing needs to run out as well. Okay. A little um, screw nut goes on top. Over here I have a spanner. Um, so this is not the original spanner for it. This is as close as I can find. It's from an angle grinder. Um, and that's just to do this little nut on top up. It needs to be as tight as you can get it so that it doesn't leak. Um, there was yeah, a, a proper tool. And I think some of them actually had a little cradle that the um, whole mechanism would sit in so that you could really swing on it to tighten it up. I find this works quite good. Cool, so that's as tight as I can get it. Um, so I'm going to put the separator back down on its trolley and um, I'll show you how we assemble it once it's on the ground. Alright, so um, as I said before, I think I said before, this has a little um, little keyed bit in the bottom of it. So this um, is shaft on top of the um, drive shaft from the separator. I need to make sure we key that in. So that goes in first. Uh, next is our uh, the, the bottom spout, so the milk spout. It sits over the top, followed by the cream spout. So I'll probably adjust these around a little bit um, once we start getting operational so that they're pointing in the right direction, uh, etc. Make it easier. Finally our um, little inlet spout and thing. So this in operation would have had a little float inside there. I don't actually use the float but um, so the way that the, it was set up was in a cow shed um, as I said and um, the milk would come straight out of the releaser. So those of you who know a little bit about old cow sheds, we don't call it a releaser anymore. So that would go into a big trough probably about um, 500 millimeters square um, and that would have a little tap on the end of it that would just slowly go um, slowly let the milk run into the top of the um, separator here and the little float the idea for that would be that that would float up and if the flow of the milk was too fast it would um, shut the flow off um, and then the sorry the cream um, spout that would be going straight into a cream can on the um, floor so as you're milking your cows, your sort of 10 or 20 cows or whatever, you would have to keep heading back out to the milk room to make sure that your cream can wasn't full. Um, and the other one would be going into an empty bucket and you'd probably take the skim milk away and feed pigs. Cool, so we're all set up here guys. Um, so we've got our um, mason jar here to catch the cream, the stainless bowl to catch the um, buttermilk or skim milk. Um, sometimes that would just go into a bucket, but Claire wants to use that to make yogurt. So we're gonna catch that in a stainless bowl. Um, so we use a piece of um, rubber weave from the cow shed, rubber hose, so that's food grade hose. Uh, the reason I've used that is, is food grade hose. Um, obviously we're going to be um, eating, drinking this milk, butter slash yoghurt, so we want it to be as clean as we can. A little valve on the container here so that just meters the milk out so that we don't flood the separator. Um, I'm going to turn it on now and uh, once it gets up to speed we'll set it going. Cool, so we're up to speed, uh, gonna start the milk flowing now and shortly we'll see um milk and drink coming out of two scouts. Cool, so we've got our cream flowing now. Um, so that one will just dribble and the milk, the uh, butter milk will start running out the uh unspout here from the start now. Skim milk. Sorry, I keep pulling it by the milk and skim milk. Uh, we've got a little bit of a leak there, which does happen when a machine is always 80 years old.
when you get the yogurt started. So all I'm doing for that is using the skim milk. Um, I usually use full cream milk for that, but it just seems like a waste um, to give all of this to the chickens. So I will just be using the skim milk today for the yogurt. I'm going to bring it up to 85 degrees Celsius. Once it reaches that temperature, I just take it off the stove and pop it into um, a sink full of cold water and cool it down to 40 degrees Celsius. Once it's cooled, I add in a half, uh, sorry, a quarter of a cup of yogurt per litre. So I've got eight litres here today, so I'll pop two cups of yogurt into there. Give it a really good stir through. Then I just pop it into um, mason jars and pop it into our hot water cupboard overnight. And I find that works really, really well. Awesome, so um, it's our um, finished cream there, so um, we got about 2 litres from 20 litres of milk, which um, yeah, is usually what we work out, how it works out roughly. Um, Claire's been making yoghurt out of the skim milk that's left. Um, so Claire is going to today make the butter um, just in our Ninja Food Processor, just for speed for the video. Um, but I thought quick, quickly before that I'd just show you our um, vintage um, butter tune. So I called it a um, ball butter tune before, but we always say it wrong, it's actually a blow butter tune. Might be able to hold that up to the camera, you can just about see the glass. Probably not. Um, it's also written on the side there. But um, So we, we got this from a uh, really cool second hand shop in Lawrenceville, in the Waikato. Um, so basically it has a little gearbox on top, and a handle that you turn, and just two little paddles. Um, I had to remake these paddles because the original ones were rotten. So um, they original wooden, wo originally wooden, I've just made them out of stainless steel and a piece of New Zealand native timber there. Um, and I, I used, pretty sure that is matte eye and I used that because it won't be tantalised. Um, so yeah, so you basically you pour your cream in here, it holds about four quarts, I'm not sure what that is equivalent, there's probably about, I don't know what that's equivalent to in um, litres. You screw your lid on, um, and you just start cranking um, until it turns first into whipped cream and then into eventually butter. Um, really similar to, um, if you're watching from the United States, a daisy butter churn. Um, the only real difference is that on this one the, um, the gearing and stuff is internal. Um, so these made in, made in England, probably 40s, 50s and onwards I would assume. But yeah, cool. So Claire's going to get on with making butter and show you how she does that part. Cheers. So like Lance said earlier, I think um, we've made butter in the past but have never really been consistent at it. We've kind of just done it for fun. But it is really one of our goals to be more um, self-sufficient in our food. We're really trying not to buy a lot from the supermarket. So today I'm just going to put uh, about half of this cream into the Ninja. So we just have a, um, I think it's just a Ninja blender. We usually just use it for smoothies. So yeah, I'll pop half in and then I just thought uh, I'd make it in two goes, um, especially if I stuff up the first lot. I've still got cream to make another lot. blender it's um when I made so I have never made butter in this before um I've used our old food processor but that broke um when I made whipped cream in this before it goes super fast uh, I think it takes it took like 10 seconds to make whipped cream so I'm just going to keep a really close eye on it because we don't want to take it too far okay it's just going to be loud <laughs> Okay, so we have blended it for a little while and if you come a little closer you can see that we've separated um, the solid butter from the buttermilk. The only thing I think we probably could have done better is had the milk a little bit 
uh, sorry, the cream a little bit colder when we started. Uh, the butter is quite melty looking. Um, you can see that it's quite soft and it's going to be too difficult to work with as it is. So I'm just going to put it in the fridge for a little while um, so it's easier to work with. Um, it's just going to melt away and go through my um, colander too easily as it is. So we're just going to strain the buttermilk off and just try and keep the solids um, as much as we can in here. Um, so that's all our butter in there. Um, so I'm just going to put it all this in a bowl and pop it in the fridge for not too long um, just enough that it's hard enough that I can work with it okay so it's evening now this um, the butter has been sitting in the fridge for a while just while we did our evening job so lights are still milking and we've just fed the calves and shut the chickens in and all that so this is nice and firm now and it's going to be really easy to work with you can see in the bowl that some of the buttermilk has just come out already. Um, I've just popped a bowl of cold water in the freezer. We just don't have any ice, so that um, is just gonna help with keeping it cool as I'm trying to rinse it like I can already feel it's melting on my fingers. So I'm just gonna run it under um, some cold water. Don't need it that much. And um, I'm just going to squeeze it. So as I squeeze it, you can see that the um, the white is the buttermilk that's coming out of it. So I'm just going to um, squeeze it as much as I can and just wash all that out. Get all that buttermilk out as best as I can. And then I'm just dunking it back into that um, bowl of cold water. So I'm pretty confident that I've got all of the buttermilk out of this. I'm just giving it an extra squeeze with our fancy butter petals um, and then I'm just going to shape it and then um, pop it onto this piece of baking paper just to pop it into the fridge awesome so I'm pretty happy with that for our first go in ages I don't think we've made butter since this time last year I'm just gonna wrap it up and pop it in the fridge and this will get eaten in no time so Lance has just arrived home from the cow shed just in time to sign off on our video for today so we wanted to say thank you so much for watching yeah um, really enjoyed um, making this video for you I feel like the cream separation, we've got that pretty sussed, um, butter I reckon we'll get lots better at what's come, yeah, what's, um, what Cleese achieved today is really awesome and I reckon the more we do the better we'll get, so really excited to see that, but um, yeah, thanks heaps for watching. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Awesome, thanks guys. Bye.